Uh, as you can see from one of my previous videos, uh, I have a Emacs Tiny Hawk. Absolutely, absolutely love this thing. It is just a blast. One of the funnest quads I own. But um, from the previous video I put up, uh, flying uh, video reception is pretty poor on it. Uh, I didn't get very far away before I had started having some major breakup. And I have a feeling it has to do with this sleeve dipole antenna. So today, uh, I'm going to show you how to install this. This is the Axi Micro right-hand circular polarized antenna. Uh, this is the UFL model. And I'm going to show you how to install this. Or at least I'm going to show you the way I install this. All right, so first things first, we're going to need our drone. We're going to need antenna. We need our typical tools, our soldering iron and whatnot. Beer. So, okay, let's get this thing apart. So, remove your four screws from the bottom. Boo, 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 these four here. I already have three of them out. So, get those three out. Four out. And lift up this little plastic tab here. That way you can get the main discharge lead to kind of slide down to the end there. Uh, flip it over and very gently unplug your four motors. I already unplugged these, but just be real gentle. Make sure you pull from here and not from here. Because if you pull these out of the motor, you're kind of hooped. So make sure you pull this out real gently. All right, and just carefully pick your board up. And if you've already slid your VTX antenna out the top of the canopy, uh, just pull it back down through. And there is all sorts of room to work. Let me grab something here to prop this guy up. There we go. And as you can see, we have a lot of room. And uh, let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, all right, so right here, you can see where your VTX antenna is soldered to your VTX. And the way the pins work is, or so the way the antenna works is so there's an outer, outer braid that's your grounding braid, and then there's an inner conductor, that's your, uh, that's your signal. So, at least with coax, your outer grounding braid is going to go to these two outer grounding pads, and your inner conductor is going to go to this one little pad right here. It's actually pretty easy to solder to, but we're going to go ahead and remove this thing. So fire up the old Heiko, and I'm going to run about eh, about 750 degrees in freedom units. Grab myself a little solder here. Start with a nice clean soldering tip. Okay, I just picked up this monstrosity of a helping hand off of Amazon. Uh, it's actually pretty nice. It's huge. It's way bigger than I thought it would be, but it has proven very, very useful so far. So... Anyways, back at it. Go ahead and heat this solder up. Sometimes you add a little add a little solder to your soldering iron to be able to transfer heat properly. Just get that warmed up. I step the heat up a little bit to 850. Just because I don't like to sit on the pad for too long. All right, so we got our grounding braid off, and we're just going to touch the contact point here, and boop, there's our antenna. And it's off, just like that. And I'll get my old snotter snucker out here, and we'll get this blob of solder off of here. Make sure we only take this bobble solder off. There we go. And... Go ahead and hit that up one more time, see if we can get a little more off. There we go. That should be good enough. Okay. So, one of the issues with running the, ax the micro axi antenna is you have to kind of feed it through canopy 
and then solder it to the board because you can't put it back through the canopy afterwards just because of how big it is. So you can see what I'm talking about here. See, you can't, you know, you can't take it all apart afterwards. You'd have to desolder this from the board. So what my plan was is I have this little IPX Gen, I don't think it's, I think it's an IPX Gen 2 to Gen 4 adapter. So you have the uh, the larger IPX antenna here, and then the smaller one here. This is for adapting a R9 MM or R9 Mini receiver to a TBS Immortal T antenna. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse this guy here so that I have a disconnect inside the, the quad so I can take this thing on and off. Mm. Uh, this might be a little a little fiddly and it might turn out to be a bad idea, but well, we'll give it a shot. So let's go ahead and eh, figure about how much we need. We'll go ahead and just take it off right about there. No going back now. And what we want to do is just strip back some of this insulation, score the outer jacket. And then you can typically kind of peel it off with your fingernails. Typically. And yep, there you go. Just like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull back our Bra outer braid. We don't want to cut it, we just want to kind of move it off to the side. Yeah, it's going to look like hell while we're doing this, but don't worry, it'll, it'll all come together in the end here. So take that braid and we're just going to make like a T out of it. I'm going to twist up this side like this. We've got these two wires kind of bisecting each other. So we've got our, our inner conductor and our outer braid. I'm going to go ahead and throw some solder on both of these. A little bit of flux. And we'll go ahead and tin up our inner conductor. There we go. So there we go. And if there's any little stray strands of that grounding braid, the outer conductor, go ahead and just kind of clip them off of there. So next to go and kind of touch up the existing solder pads. Um, I always like to use just a little bit of flux on just about just about everything. We'll just go ahead and clean that up. There's actually a through hole there. And it's always good to get all this solder off here because you have no idea what quality or kind of solder is on there. Hell, this could be lead free for all I know. Some weird rules about importing things that we classify as kids' toys that have lead solder on them. So, Get out a little bit of grounding braid. I'm probably going a little overkill on this, but I'm just going to show you folks just in case you got to deal with this. A little bit of grounding braid. And that is 
pretty much all the solder off of there. So it's got this huge grounding pad here. Couldn't miss that if you were trying. Go ahead and touch it up with some fresh solder. There we go. And a little bit on that, that signal pad there. Okay. So next thing we have to do is try to find our part. Oh, there it is. Okay. So now we got to kind of think about how we're going to run this thing. Um, thinking, just solder this like pretty much like that. So go ahead and trim this grounding braid down a little bit, and trim this conductor back a little bit. Make them a little shorter. And just kind of dry fit it to see just see where everything lines up. So that's a, about perfect. Let me see how it's I'm gonna get that grounding braid on this pad here. And that signal wire is gonna go right there. So, I think I'm going to try to solder the grounding braid last. I get that signal wire first. Uh, obviously, the grounding braid mass is a lot larger, so we run the risk of accidentally desoldering the signal wire as we're soldering the grounding braid on. But we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, as we do with most things here. All right, I have to give it the old uh, the old backhand routine here, just because I want you guys to be able to see it. All right, that's attached. And that's that. That should be all the slaughtering we need to do. Again, like always, take a hot iron, cover it with solder, and then turn it off. Keeps that tip from oxidizing. Okay, so now we've got that taken care of. Go ahead and uh, clean this up a little bit with some flux remover. I'll be right back. It's all cleaned up. I always recommend double checking your work um, electrically if you can, or at the very least, with like a, a decent quality jeweler's loop. Just, just kind of get your eyes on it. Make sure it looks, make sure it looks good. And I lost one of my little rubber bumpers here. Didn't even know this came out. So now that we took a good look at that and made sure it's looking just right, we do need to deal with this guy here because we can't have that just flapping the breeze. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my my new antenna down through the hole in the frame. Kind of try to skirt around all these wires. And we take a piece of heat shrink. So that, you know this isn't going to be a quick on and off type deal when I'm done, but it's you know it's better than nothing. So we're going to take our antenna and we're just going to gently connect it to our little UFL pigtail coming off our VTX. There we go, now it's connected. You, know, you could go ahead and just direct solder this guy to the to the uh, VTX here if you wanted to. Um, it's certainly not a bad choice. It's just not what I was gonna go for on this, this little job here. All right, so we got our heat shrink on there. Let's go ahead and gear up and shrink it down. And I like to kind of just pinch down on a heat shrink, just kind of seal the ends off. 
All right, and now let's just try to put it all back together. Hopefully we got in a decent spot. I do have these LEDs I put on here to contend with. Um, I'll put a link to those in the description below. There we go. That's that. There's my Axie. That guy, that, that, that looks just... That's just ridiculous, isn't it? I think what I might do is after I give it a little bit of a test flight, so I'm just going to glue that down just like that, kind of right back here inside the canopy. Hope it doesn't look like... Hope it doesn't look like crap, but that's kind of what I plan on doing. All right, that should be good. Let's fire it up, see how it looks. Uh, for me, this made a pretty big difference in the video uh, quality in my house, especially when I'm sitting downstairs and I fly upstairs. I was getting, uh, it, it was very difficult to fly to those extremes in my house uh, with the circular polarized antenna, this this acro, this Axie Micro. Uh, big difference. I highly recommend this. Um, I don't know if I would suggest gluing it to the canopy like I did. I found out that it does kind of impede my access to my USB port. Minor oversight there. I'll probably just get like a 90 or I'll find a way to relocate this again without really adding any weight to the craft. If you like this, consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up on this video. Scroll down through the rest of my videos. I have a lot of very informative tutorials on how to do silly things like this or how to, geez, just how to get your quad up and running. If you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comment section below. I, I read every single one of them. I love interacting with the community. Uh, anyways, I hope, you, I hope you like this. Go out, go fly, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.